In this lecture, we explain the dynamic model of an n degree of freedom robot manipulator. Dynamic equations describe the relationship between force and motion and are represented by ordinary differential equations. The forces and torques which are applied to the joints by the actuators are denoted by tau. These forces make the joint angles change. The position, velocity, and acceleration of the joints are shown by the vectors q, q dot, and q double dot. There are different ways to calculate the dynamic model of a mechanical system, but the two methods that are used to drive the dynamical model of robot manipulators are Euler-Lagrange formulation, which is also known as Lagrangian formulation, and Newton-Euler formulation. The complexity of the analysis using Newton order formulation method increases with the number of joints in the robot. It's usually easier to use the Lagrangian formulation to calculate the dynamical model, and therefore we will also use this method in this video. To use Lagrangian formulation, we first need to form the Lagrangian of the system, which is defined as the kinetic energy minus the potential energy of the system. The kinetic energy is a quadratic function of the joint velocities and is equal to 1 half q dot transpose m of q times q dots, where m is the n by n inertia matrix which is symmetric and positive definite. The potential energy is only a function of q and is independent of q dots. We denote the potential energy by p of q. We then obtain the dynamical model of the system using Lagrange equations, which are in this form. Let's now substitute the Lagrangian into the Lagrange equations and calculate the dynamical model of a robot manipulator. The Lagrangian is a function of q and q dots and is equal to 1 half q dot transpose m of q q dots minus p of q. We calculate each of the terms in the Lagrange equations. The partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q dot is m of q times q dot. Note that m is a symmetric matrix and the potential energy function p is independent of q dot. So the derivative of p with respect to q dot is zero. Then we take the derivative of this term. To calculate the derivative of m of q times q dot, we use the product rule for derivatives. So the derivative is equal to m dot of q times q dot plus m of q times q double dot. Until now, we have calculated the first term on the left hand side of the Lagrange equations. To find the second term, we should take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to q, which is equal to the partial of the kinetic energy function with respect to q, minus the partial of the potential energy function with respect to q and can be written in this form as the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half q dot transpose m of q times q dot. If we substitute these two terms into the Lagrange equations, we see the dynamical model of the robot manipulator as in this form. The first term of the dynamical model is the inertia matrix times q double dots. Define C as an n by n matrix such that the second term minus the third term is equal to C times q dots. For a given robot manipulator, the matrix C is not unique, but the vector C q dot is unique. We will see this in an example later in the video. The last term is the partial of the potential function with respect to q. This is an n by 1 vector, which is known as the vector of gravitational forces and is denoted by g of q. So the dynamical model is written as m of q times q double dots plus c of q and q dots times q dots plus g of q equals tau, where q is the vector of joint coordinates m of q is the inertia matrix, c of q and q dot times q dot is the vector of Coriolis and centrifugal forces, g of q is the vector of gravity forces, 
and tau is the vector of joint torques. In summary, to find the dynamic model of a robot manipulator, we first find the kinetic energy K of Q and Q dots and the potential energy P of Q and then define the Lagrangian as L equals K minus P. Then we use Lagrange's equation to find the dynamical model. To better understand the dynamical modeling of robot manipulators, we show step by step how to obtain the dynamical model of a 2 degree of freedom robot manipulator with revolute joints. We are not going to explain the details of all calculations here, as we just want to get a high level overview of how the dynamical model can be found for a simple robot manipulator. We first make a few definitions. M sub i is the mass of link i, L sub i is the length of link i, L sub c i is the distance from the previous joint to the center of mass of link i, and i sub i is the moment of inertia of link i. We then calculate the overall kinetic energy of the manipulator. The kinetic energy of an n-link manipulator contains two main parts. The first is the kinetic energy due to the linear velocity of the link center of mass, where v sub c i is the linear velocity vector of the center of mass. And the second term is the kinetic energy due to the angular velocity of the links, where omega sub i is the angular velocity vector of link i, and i sub c i is a 3 by 3 inertia matrix of link i. We start with the first term. The positions of the center of mass of link 1 and 2 can be calculated by finding the x and y components of the center of masses. This can be done similarly to the calculation of the forward kinematics. The velocities of the center of mass of links can also be obtained by taking the derivative of the positions of the center of mass. For the first link, V sub C i is in this form, and V sub C i transpose V sub C i has this simple form. We calculate the velocity of the center of mass of the second link and then find V sub C2 transpose V sub C2, which can be written as this. We can then calculate the kinetic energy due to the linear velocity of the link's center of mass, which is one half Q dot transpose times a two by two matrix times Q dot. The kinetic energy due to the angular velocity of the links is denoted by K2, which contains two terms for link one and link two, and is equal to one half Q dot transpose times another two by two matrix times Q dot. So the total kinetic energy is one half Q dot transpose M of Q times Q dots, where M is a two by two symmetric matrix. We will explain in the next lecture that the matrix M is a positive definite matrix for all values of Q, which means that all eigenvalues of the matrix M have positive real parts for any given joint coordinates Q. Note that as we mentioned earlier, the kinetic energy is a function of Q and Q dots. So far, we have calculated the inertia matrix M. To calculate the matrix C and the vector G, we use the equations we obtained earlier. We know the vector C times Q dots equals M dot Q dots minus one half the partial of Q dot transpose M Q dots with respect to Q. So we need to calculate the matrix M dots and then multiply it by Q dots. The matrix M is in this form. The derivatives of the constant terms in M are zero. So M dot Q dot takes this simple form. To calculate the second term of the vector C Q dots, we need to first calculate Q dot transpose M Q dots and then take the partial derivative of this term with respect to Q. The result is a two by one vector, which is shown here. So the vector C times Q dot is in this form, where the first term on the right hand side is M dot Q dots, and the second term is one half the partial of Q dot transpose M Q dot with respect to Q. 
This can be simplified to this vector and then can be written as the product of a 2 by 2 matrix C and a two-dimensional vector Q dot. Note that there are other possible choices for the matrix C, but we chose this particular C as we want the matrix to satisfy conditions that will be explained in the next video. We finally calculate the total potential energy P and then find the vector of gravity forces G by taking the partial derivative of P with respect to Q. We start by calculating the potential energy associated with the masses M1 and M2, and then add them up to find the total potential energy of the system. We assume the potential energy is zero at y equals zero. We obtain this expression for the total potential energy of the system. It should be noted that the potential energy is only a function of Q and not Q dots. That's why it's written as P of Q. The vector G is then obtained by taking the partial derivative of P with respect to Q, which can be written in this form. In summary, the dynamical model of a robot manipulator is M of Q times Q double dots plus C of Q and Q dots times Q dots plus G of Q equals tau, where the matrices M and C and the vector G for a two degree of freedom robot are in these forms. We will explain some of the properties of the dynamical model in the next video, and then we'll explain how the vector tau can be controlled so that the vector of joint variables converges to a desired vector or follows a vector of desired trajectories.